Welcome back to Tech Check, guys. My name's Gareth, this is Tech Check. Today, I've got another PC build for you. We're gonna walk you through, step by step, how to build in this fractal north case. Got a lot of different parts here, guys. So we're using this Ghost um, 4070 from Gamewood. We're using the 240 T30 from uh, Glacier One Fantex. We've got this Z590 Ace from MSI. We've got eight Fantex T30 fans that we're putting into this case. We've got a one terabyte Samsung 980 Pro. We've got the 11900K and we've got 32 gigs worth of RAM. Um, this is the HyperX Fury RAM as well. It's running at 3600 mega transfers per second, 32 gigabytes as well. Overall, 850 watt power supply from MSI. And I'm hoping it's gonna be a good one. So stick around. Let's walk you through it step by step. Let's do it. So I'm joined today, guys, by Daniel. He's come up again from London. He's brought an absolute plethora of parts with him, and we're going to be building two computers. So I'm not going to be changing in between. It's going to be a bit of a marathon, but we'll split it into two different videos. So as I recently said, guys, we've got this Z590 Ace from MSI. We've got this 32 gigs worth of uh, Fury RAM. We've got this lovely 11900k is going to be absolutely perfect for any content designing or gaming absolutely brilliant and we're going to black this fractal north case out with very minimal amount of rgb because well it's already very good looking so to give myself a bit of a head start daniel's already installed into this particular case um they're all in one which is the glacier 240 so as you can see at the front here, guys, these beautiful T30 fans, it's actually a 240 mil cooler and we've put it at the front of the case and we've installed another one just for a little bit of uniformity, if that's a word. So essentially, no problems with regards to clearance. This wooden front with this dark oak is absolutely stunning, guys, and gives a little bit more of a premium feel as well, but... At the front, these will push loads and loads of air through into this case where we're gonna be having that 4070 and I'm hoping it's gonna look the part. Inside here, guys, you will see we've got our 240 at the front and then we've got our all-in-one tubes which are nicely being protected by our plastic cover. But I think having those three fans at the front, the bottom one will push lots of nice cool air towards our power supply and give a nice waft of cool air towards our graphics card. Um, ideally, I would have liked to have put the 240 at the top, but what we're actually doing is we're gonna do push pull on this 11900K. So we've got plenty of clearance for that 4070 and it just means that we're getting optimal cooling for our 11900K as well. If you were to opt for a 240 mil cooler at the top, then please be aware that you will need a very low uh, profile RAM um, and you're looking at less than 35 millimeters in order to not run into any particular issues. So that's the reason why we've opted for push pull on the front. We shouldn't encounter any temperature issues either. With that being said, we'll get the case out of the way. We'll come back to that a little bit later. We'll build up our motherboard and I'll show it, see you shortly. So as I mentioned previously, guys, we're gonna be using this 11900K absolutely perfect for anyone that's an aspiring content creator or an avid gamer give you a quick look at what that one looks like we just need to make sure that we open up our socket we can then pull that up and we can match the triangle on the actual socket to the triangle that's on the cpu remembering the pins are in this particular socket so when we're lowering it down we're not just dropping it in place then we can go ahead, lower down our socket and tighten down our retention arm. In terms of RAM, we've got our Kingston Fury Beast. Again, 3,600 mega transfers per second, 32 gigs. We've got four sticks at eight gigs each. So we'll go ahead, open up each one of our RAM slots. We can line up our RAM by making sure that the notch is in the center. We can then pop it into place and then Firm pressure on either side until you hear a click. 
Next up guys is our NVMe and as I said before this is 980 Pro M.2 we're going to be putting it on our top M.2 slot as well so we just need to remove these two screws up here and then we'll go ahead and install our NVMe. We can put our M.2 at a 20 degree angle and slide it in and then that will nicely sit on that standoff and we can go ahead and just screw in our M.2. We can then go ahead guys and replace our heat shield. Remembering if you have got any film on the back of our heat shield here, make sure to remove that before placing it back. And there we have it guys, in the space of about a minute and a half, we've got our CPU, our RAM and our M.2 nicely installed. For those eagle-eyed viewers, you'll see that I've already got our back plate for our aftermarket cooler and essentially all I've done is I've applied our back bracket for our Intel CPU. I've then gone ahead and put on our standoffs along with a spacer and you need to make sure that that's done for each one of the four corners. So we'll put on our spacer and then we'll go ahead and screw in our standoff. And now we're at the point, guys, where we can go ahead and install the motherboard into the case. So turning our attention, guys, to this Fractal North case. As I said, I'm a massive fan of this case. I think it looks stunning. I think it brings a, a premium element uh, to the actual case itself, having that little bit of nice touch with metal and wood. Totally different uh, kind of feeling to all the other cases and I think that's why it's done really really well. So what we'll do is we'll proceed to install our motherboard. We'll just remove our all-in-one and we'll get our case installed with this particular motherboard. Make sure this is the particular time that you remove any actual films off the back of your IO shield and if you've not got an integrated IO shield make sure that you put that in right now. We'll go ahead now guys and drop our motherboard into our case and we need to sit it on these particular standoffs which are already installed for us which is a nice touch. Just make sure our IO shield lines up with the back of the case and there we go we're nicely in position. Three screws at the top three screws at the bottom which gives us six and then one here and one here so we need eight screws in total make sure not to over tighten these screws because you don't want to actually rip out the threads but you do want to make a good contact so you don't get any shorts or anything like that what we'll do now guys is we're going to go ahead and we are going to take two of these fantex t30s and we are going to do push pull on this 240 mil uh, radiator so I want to get those two fans installed now so we've got plenty of room and then we'll go ahead and attach our all-in-one and we'll get the additional two fans at the top and one fan at the back. And you'll notice guys I haven't tightened any of these screws up because I want a little bit of flexibility uh, when actually manoeuvring these because as you can see I've just took the ram out uh, to give myself a little bit more room. Ideally, if you hadn't have installed the all-in-one prior to installing the motherboard, you would have installed these two fans at the back, but just because we're trying to save a little bit of time by getting the all-in-one in and these three front fans, I'll just show you this now. So all I've done is I'm putting the screws in, but I'm leaving them pretty loose so that I've got a little bit of flexibility when it comes down to hiding these cables at the bottom. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to pull on this little uh, tab at the back for our top and that will remove our panel for us and now we have clear access to mount our two 120 mil fans at the top here as well so what we're going to do now guys is install our two t30s at the top we want them set as exhaust just make sure that you've got your cables for easy cable management coming out the back what we'll do is we'll undo these two thumb screws we'll pull the back panel that nicely slides off we can put that to one side. What I would advise you do is just push your cables through to the back of the actual case. A magnetic screwdriver always comes in more handy. And I would always advise, don't do them too tight to begin with, so that if you're not very happy with the, the position of them, 
you can always go back and actually move them about a little bit. So you can start to see here, guys, we're gonna put our rear fan in now as well. There's the lovely little gap here, and that gap corresponds to this gap here by the time we've got these tightly screwed down. We're not causing any undue pressure on our all-in-one tubes either. These particular fans will go nicely with that blacked out look that we're looking at, but we'll also add a little bit of contrast to the black because of the gray as well. So we'll get four more screws in this rear fan here. Next important bit guys is attaching our cooler to our CPU. For that, we're gonna need some decent thermal paste. This time I'm opting for this pH NDC compound. Any will actually do, MX4, or MX5, or if you've got some other ones that you've got lying around, not a problem. I like just to do a pea-sized shape in the middle of the actual CPU itself. We'll take off our cover. All we need to do is line up these holes with the standoffs and make sure that once you've got it in position, you keep it still. We then want to take each one of these four thumb screws and apply cross diagonally, even pressure, just with your thumbs, you don't need to go too tight. There we go, and once we've got that on, I'll put this one on first, which is just in this top corner, and then once I've got that one on, a few turns, there we go, I'll get another one and I'll do this one down in this corner. There we go, and vice versa, we'll do these last two. So once they're actually a little bit thumb tight, guys, I like just to get a screwdriver and go around in a crisscross pattern and just make sure that they're nice and tightened up. Not again, not too tight. You don't need these to be OTT. So just before we attach our fascia plate, guys, what we'll do is connect our CPU uh, PWM controller here. We just need to line this up and put it onto CPU fan one. So it's starting to come together guys and I've routed this particular cable uh, through some very tight gaps. I'm hoping you'll appreciate that it's very neatly uh, orientated. And we're now gonna connect our five volt uh, cable here or our RGB connection down here onto our J Rainbow One, which is a five volt addressable header. All we're gonna do is slide this particular power supply with the fan facing down and that will nicely then sit into position. We can go ahead and just tighten down our thumb screws. So guys, we're now at the stage where I pushed all of our front IO through to the front of the case. We've got our PSU nicely installed. We've done some of the routing of the cables and so on and so forth. It don't look too bad at all. So let's turn this around. Let's connect all of that front IO and then get the graphics card in. We've already connected our two eight pin EPS connections. We'll start off with our 24 pin. It's very, very straightforward. We're just gonna push that one into place. We've already got a nice tight kink here, but we can mess around with regards to those at a later stage. We'll move on to our USB type C, and that goes onto this connection just down here. Do just be mindful that if it doesn't go on quite easy, then you've probably got it the wrong way around. So we'll try and just push this one on now. There we are, that goes in straight away, so not a problem. We've got our two front fans here, which we need to connect to our fan connector down here. And again, we'll pull all the excess cables, guys, through to the back of the case after, that's not a problem. We've got our USB type C, and I'm probably gonna route this one a little bit higher than this cable here, because Essentially what we need to do is make sure it's orientated correctly and make sure the notch on this particular cable lines up with the notch on the actual connection on the motherboard. We've got down the bottom here, our five volt addressable connection for our pump. And then we've got another PWM connection which can go on the bottom down here as well. Last connection down here is our HD audio. A little trick with this one is make sure that the actual writing is facing upwards and then you can push that one straight on. Then the last cables guys are our JFP1 or our front panel connectors, power switch, power LED minus and power LED positive. Power LED positive, power LED minus and then our power switch which is just at the end. So next up guys is our graphics card installation. Really, really straightforward for that guys. We're gonna remove our second and third 
PCIe brackets. Next up guys, we've got this Gamewood 4070. Really, really nice looking uh, small form factor 4070. It's nice to see something which is literally only a two slot card, which is, or even less than that really. But what you'll get is a little bit of LED illumination on the front of this particular graphics card. Again, fits nicely with the blacked out theme with a little bit of gray and black on the sides and back. We've got the pass through design on the back plate as well. And overall, nice little 4070. So all we're gonna do, pop it into the slot and then we need even and force down until you hear a nice click. And there we go. We'll go ahead, put the two screws back in place. And I'm just gonna push up slightly on the graphics card. Whilst I'm tightening that down, just to get rid of any unwanted sag. And then we can go ahead and install our extension cable. And what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and sort out these particular cables. Again, pulling any excess through to the back of the case. I'll see you guys in the next couple of minutes when we'll do a test boot to make sure that we've done everything correct. Right then guys, we've hit that pivotal part where we do uh, our first actual test boot and we pray that everything has been actually connected correctly. So we'll flick the power. I can see the motherboards lit up, which is always a good sign. We'll press our power button. We've got a HDMI cable connected and the mouse and the keyboard as well. So hopefully everything will be absolutely fine, but I quite like it already, guys. The, the little bit of blue, I'll take back what, uh, what Daniel said uh, or what I said to Daniel in terms of I think the black cables will be much better. I think that little subtleness of a bit of colour goes really really nicely. So obviously the RGB is not all synced up and it would look a little bit better as and when it's sorted but there we go guys. Um, should go straight through to Windows because we're using a 980 Pro that's already got uh, a Windows installation on it. So with that being said, final thoughts on the case. I think overall it was really, really nice to build in. I think uh, from a mid tower perspective, I think you can get away with quite a lot in this particular case. Um, I've got no real moans and groans with regards to it with the exception of what we spoke about previously. I think quality control on a 130 pound case should be slightly better. The, the back IO shield should match with regards to uh, the, this sheet metal. Shouldn't have any bends in it or anything like that. And I would highly suggest if yours is the same, it's defective and you send it back. But with that being said, I love the wooden panel at the front. The integration of metal and wood is a, well, a really, really nice change. And I think it will add that little bit of a premium feel, which is good. Airflow absolutely fine i love this huge top panel on the front the gold buttons adds again a little bit of a different touch as well plenty of space for everything that we've thrown in this particular case and from my perspective really really nice to build in the, the one thing i would say is a few extra cutouts would go a long long way but fractal i think you smashed it out the park daniel's obviously building this with a 4070 this 11 900k an 850 watt power supply, these eight T30 Fantex fans, and this Glacier One 240 mil cooler, which we're running push pull on as well. So, anyone that's interested in that, yes, you can do that with a 360, 240, 280 mil cooler, no problems at all. I'm visually uh, very excited for this particular build. Obviously, this is going for Daniel's son, so I'm sure he's absolutely buzzing to get this back as well. But I'd love to hear what your thoughts are, guys. Should we have gone RGB or should we have got rid of all the RGB? Let me know. One of the benefits of having RGB components is you can turn it off if you don't really want it on. Let me know down below. Do you like the build? What would you have changed? And if so, what would that have been? Big thanks to Daniel for sending all the parts up to me and a massive help for obviously going through the build with me as well. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, smash that subscriber button guys. Don't forget to hit that like button as well. 
and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.